Mantis or insectoid appearing beings have led the abductee experiencer phenomenon from the beginning of our modern day awareness of it. They appear to be at the higher, if not the highest end of the ET hierarchy since they are most always described as overseeing or have a supervisory role in the abduction procedure process. This is the case whether it is a medical procedure or human ET hybrid interaction. This takes place during situations involving baby or child presentations all the way to sexual instruction, interaction, and possible telepathic absorption of emotions and sensations. In many such encounters, there is normally a mantis or insectoid being directing and observing the other beings and people involved. Regarding these unusual beings and these unusual circumstances, abduction researcher and licensed clinical social worker John Carpenter asked over two decades years ago, why would anyone imagine a large bug directing an abduction experience? Is this something we would hope for or desire to see? Subjects sense a higher level of wisdom and functioning in this type of entity. Whatever its purpose or origin, we certainly need further study. 1. More than 20 years have passed since John Carpenter and other researchers made this observation. Contact between the mantis or insectoid beings and humans has continued and we have learned much more from the abductee experiencers who have consciously recalled memories of being in their presence, and of being operated on of being studied by them and from being shown or accidentally remembering some of their technology. Mantid alien original artist Carpenter and others were learning about the mantis beings, a researcher experiencer published an excellent description of their appearance, these beings have long, narrow faces, with long, narrow, large eyes, sharply slanted upward and outward in an almost narrow V position, giving an almost insect-like appearance. This comparison is heightened by the praying mantis types extremely thin, long torsos, long, extremely thin arms which are usually crooked into a sharp bend at the mid-joint, with the hand and fingers sloping almost vertically downward from the wrist, and legs also bent at an almost right angle at the mid-joint, creating a crouched pose. The overall effect is the characteristic praying mantis look. It should be noted that experiencers feel that this type is no insect, but rather an intelligent, gentle-spirited, and jerky-moving, human-like life form. There are both males and females. 2. The mantis being pictured on the right was described by the abductee experiencer as a female and her demeanor was positive and inquisitive. Her eyes were dark brown to near black. This particular mantis used what is sometimes referred to as a camouflage response or a screen image to make herself appear a less threatening being, and as the experiencer was not afraid, she then allowed herself to be viewed up close and thoroughly by the subject. This included intentionally allowing the abductee experiencer to observe her genitalia not shown in image which were a very light color. This was obviously a teaching moment for the subject, who still believes this being was completely positive and non-threatening. Experiencer named Danian Kell has also encountered a mantis being like this one and he also felt very positive feelings and emotions from this type of being. 3. Another well-known case is that of artist and abductee experiencer David Huggins and his provides an interesting and alternative view into these beings. One important note to mention before we discuss David Huggins' mantis beings is the ones he has seen over his lifetime did not have black skin and appeared more brown-green in color. His also wore garments from time to time. It is possible the mantis beings Huggins interacted with were hybrids of some type, but we do not know this with 100% certainty. Just as many other beings have variations in height, skin tone, and eye color, so too may be the case with the mantis insectoid beings. 
David Huggins' mantis beings behave in a more controlling fashion during his encounters. David oft-times depicts his mantis overseer without clothing, but it is sometimes seen wearing a cape or a cloak whilst other beings and experiencers move around naked. His mantis behaves in what some have termed a voyeuristic manner, observing the sexual encounters between Huggins and his personal hybrid, who is called Crescent. The HR team ponders the idea, did this mantis merely observe the sexual acts between Huggins and Crescent or did this mantis have a desire, or perhaps even a need, to telepathically absorb the emotions and feelings experienced between the two? Because we know they have witnessed sexual acts between Huggins and Crescent many times before, we can be fairly certain the mantis was not there simply to learn. This is a rather peculiar aspect of these types of beings, or at least the mantises with the brown-green skin. This and other cases, is why the HR team believes the mantises, and perhaps other beings, can telepathically absorb emotions and physical sensations experienced by abductee experiencers. We do not know if this is accomplished solely by biological telepathic means or enhanced with neural technology or a combination of the two. This would entail biological manipulation with abductee experiencers as well as the mantises and insectoids themselves. 4. From studying other abduction cases as well as David Huggins, it appears that a mantis-type being or a tall grey when present, is normally the one in control as an overseer, leader or diplomat. An example from David's case is when the hybrid females wanted Huggins to stay with them and not be returned to Earth. They asked the mantis being for permission for Huggins to stay, but the mantis said this was not to be allowed. In other words, the mantis beings are definitely the ones in charge. Below is another excellent example of how the mantises appear to have an exoskeleton as the previous image illustrates, as well as the role they play. This account comes from the well-known UFO asterisk BC site from an abductee experiencer using the name Jim. We would at this time like to thank our friends at UFOBC for their diligence in publishing the UFOBC website and for allowing us to quote from a few of their articles. We encourage our readers to visit their site, and we have provided several links in our sources for this article so you may learn more about the fascinating cases they have published relating to mantis beings. UFO asterisk BC and others excerpts I woke up at about 2.30 in the morning to find a tall praying mantis looking being and a cloaked being by the side of my bed. I thought to myself what crazy dream is this? The cloaked being looked at me from beneath its hood, revealing its black skin, which appeared leathery and reflecting light much like a beetle's skin. I shut my eyes, thinking this must be a realistic dream. But when I reopened my eyes, the figures were unfortunately still there. The cloaked figure looked up to the tall praying mantis type, as if it was confused as to what actions it should take next. The praying mantis turned its head towards the hooded one and made a series of high-pitched clicking sounds. I sensed this was the one in command, possibly the other was some kind of security guard. It's at this point I realized, I'm definitely not dreaming, I can hear them. All I recall was that it was tall. At least seven foot, it had to bend its neck because of the height of the ceiling. Its head was pointed with large eyes. Its fur arms were extremely long and moved in a jerky fashion. The cloaked figure was closer, crouching by my bed so I couldn't tell how tall it was, but I could clearly see that it was wearing some kind of overlapping ridge de moor, including a metallic-looking breastplate that had a series of circles on it. Its head was dome-like with emotionless facial features. 
Its eyes were large and surrounded again by detailed ridges. It acted in a way that reminded me of a robot or insect. At this point, the mantis bent its upper body, over my bed and directly above me. In its hand it was holding a long metal object that looked like a needle. A green light shot directly from the needle and into my right eye. Maybe it's a laser, I am not sure, but I do know it felt very painful. I could see all the veins from my eye, the same effect you get when an optician checks your eyes. I screamed but no noise came out. I then felt something stick into my skull. I'm not sure what because by that time I had my eyes closed. I pretended to sleep and went into deep panic. My mind was racing at a million miles per hour. I heard a great whooshing sound and when I next reopened my eyes thankfully they had gone. 5. Mantis Mantid Extraterrestrials Another well-known case involving mantis beings is that of Simon Parks, a former Whitby British counselor who has gone public with his contact experiences. He describes the mantis beings as very proud beings who are capable of exerting a strong commanding presence. They are also very technical and think like a chess computer. Simon Parks believes the mantis beings who wear purple robes are the most senior. In other words, he, like the HR team, believes they are at the top of the ET hierarchy. 6. Now do you understand? Returning to the account involving Jim, a mantis being shows a holograph of Earth to the abductee experiencer. Each time he touches the Earth holograph, he sees and is given information about a particular geographic location. Each time this occurs, the effects are different, yet the outcome is the same, he is shown destruction due to the actions of humans. The mantis asks him at different times during the difficult experience, now do you understand? 7. The lesson these beings are apparently trying to communicate and the HR team believes many have done this quite well is that humans are causing much more pain and destruction than they know, and humans kill what they do not understand and oft times kill what they simply fear. This is a recurring theme for abductee experiencers and everyone will tell you, these types of encounters are very difficult to endure, therefore, you the reader human, should take heed. We highly recommend that you to read all three parts of Jim's interesting accounts involving mantis beings. There are also excellent illustrations and in the end, we are provided a representation of what this particular being looked like, black skin, with a chest-like armor, an exoskeleton, who was wearing a cape and donning a symbol that appeared to be a golden snake. Buzzing and clicking sounds are associated with these beings as well as telepathic interrogation-like tactics during subsequent visits. Three Mantid Mantis Aliens The telepathic interrogation can be just as intense as seeing a hologram of Earth and watching our planet be destroyed. This is an interrogative type of interaction that is not uncommon for abductee experiencers to have to endure and it is normally carried out by mantis insectoid type beings. Their demeanor however, ranges from loving and gentle to what we have just discussed. These variations, we believe, are due to the amount of information an abductee experiencer remembers and how much of that knowledge they share with others especially those going public with their experiences. They are deeply personal to the abductee experiencer and have been described by well-known subjects such as Simon Parks, Joe and Linda Montaldo, AJ, as well as other people with whom the HR team has interviewed but who have requested anonymity. Below is another excerpt from the UFO Asterisk BC website that demonstrates the mantis's high level of technological, including medical expertise.
This extreme level of technology has been demonstrated by the greys and by the hybrids as well. It is oft times compared to Star Trek level technology and as if these beings are using interdimensional instruments and equipment. Example I stood there helpless for the longest time, not knowing what to do but feeling a real sense of panic. Something had to be done quickly. All of a sudden there were two beings that appeared next to my friend. They seemed to push me right aside and silently went right to work on her, like skilled surgeons. They stood to her left, standing together and working furiously on my friend. I had no idea who they were, what they were doing, but the first thing I thought of was are they aliens? I stood there and watched, I thought they looked like praying mantises. Alien praying mantises. Then I focused on my friend and saw her head was split wide open, like these aliens sliced it perfectly open. I saw freshly sliced raw flesh and these aliens slash praying mantis were busily removing pieces of bone, rock, or whatever from her brain. This did not look anything like what I would imagine the inside of a brain to look but it was just such a clean cut. These two alien slash praying mantis worked quickly, without speaking one word. I seemed to black out and don't remember any more of it. 8. New Abilities Oft times abductee experiencers will tell us they have gained new psychic abilities. These feelings of new found abilities have been recently demonstrated in Kathleen Martin's and Denise Stoner's Commonalities Report. Out of a total of 50 abductee experiencers who answered the question regarding an increase in psychic abilities, 72% stated that they are more sensitive or intuitive than they were prior to contact 79% stated that they developed new psychic abilities after a contact experience. One person reported that they have always been psychic and another noted that his or her psychic abilities increased. What follows is an excerpt of an account demonstrating their high level of technology. We also revisit this subject in the next document with another demonstration of their medical technology. For those of you whose curiosity we have roused, the HR team believes there are mantis hybrid beings and we are calling them tall blacks due to their black skin and certain physical characteristics including their tall, eloquent stature. The following account may seem unreal to some, but we can tell you that this level of technology appears to be the status quo for all of the beings described in the abductee experiencer phenomenon. My praying mantis figure was very kind to me. He urged me to stay calm and telepathically reassured me everything would be all right. My right eye was removed by a device that came down from the white ceiling. I started to really panic but the mantis kept me from really freaking out. Then it was replaced. The mantis also told me telepathically that I was a special person who would really make a difference here on Earth. I am now 44 years old and have made no real significant differences to the human race. I think he may have just wanted to reassure a child at the time. I have retained one thing from my encounter. I still have the power to see major global disasters before they happen. I only report them to either my fiancé or my close family members because I know anyone else would just call me crazy. But now they believe me for the most part. Because when I see something clearly and tell them, it always happens. 9. The Tall Blacks We believe there is a high probability the mantis beings have created hybrid versions of themselves using alternate DNA including DNA from human abductee experiencers. Our next document covers them in as much detail as we can possibly provide with the knowledge we have at this time. We hope this document has been educational and helpful in your search for answers about the mantis insectoids.
These are by no means the only examples of interaction between humans and mantis appearing beings, so we encourage you to seek further and educate yourself about the contact which is occurring on our planet. Remember, there is a lot of misinformation, false or inaccurate information that is spread unintentionally, as well as disinformation, false information that is spread intentionally, on the Internet. So seek wisely.